What's going on internet? IG here again today. And unless you've been living under a really big rock, you'd probably know that Windows 10 is, well, it's rolling out now. Uh, it's not quite out, out for everyone, but it is rolling out over the next couple of weeks. And starting July 29th, uh, you'll be able to upgrade your PC for free if it's running genuine Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 8.1. So in today's video, I'm going to dig into some of my first impressions of Windows 10, what I think it does well, what I think it could do better, and how it stacks up against a lot of the Linux distributions that people like myself and possibly you as well have, uh, have really come to appreciate over the last couple years. And trust me, there actually are quite a few features that you'll recognize. So all that said, let's dig into these Windows 10 first impressions. All right, so here we are with the Windows 10 desktop. And for those of you who might be wondering, this is the Australian version. And so there is no Cortana down here in the bottom here, at least not yet. So let's talk about first impressions. Uh, first of all, I love the, the look and the feel of the Windows 10 desktop. It kind of flattens everything out. All the icons look a lot flatter as you can see. Um, and everything just looks a lot more bright and vibrant and colorful. Not to mention this wallpaper is, it's pretty cool. Um, if you have a look at some behind the scenes footage about how they made that wallpaper, it is an actual photo, which I thought was pretty cool. All right, so let's talk about the elephant in the room, the start menu. First impressions of the start menu are depending on what you're upgrading from, the start menu might look like a bit of a mess. Um, unfortunately, it just doesn't translate well over from Windows 8 to uh, the Windows 10 start menu uh, out of the box. As you can see, I've got a huge long list of stuff that I had pinned on my Windows 8 start screen, um, but now it's, it's kind of in this long list. And it wasn't terribly organized when I first upgraded. Uh, it's not too hard to fix, but still, it was a bit annoying. Apart from that, very, very functional. Uh, still all the same great stuff that you get about live tiles um, in terms of glanceable information. But at the end of the day, it gives you, uh, you know, your, your start menu, I guess, for those of you who missed it. Uh, you also get your letters and numbers there to filter out your all programs, which makes a little bit more sense. But at the end of the day, all I use is, uh, is type to search something. And for that, it does a fantastic job. This is what I've gotten used to in every other Linux distribution that I've used, being able to hit the Windows key, start typing, and not have to worry about navigating through endless menus and drop down, and drop down lists. So the start menu gets a pass. Um, I'm not crazy excited about it. I didn't terribly miss it in the first place, but the fact that my simple type the meta key and search what I'm looking for is still there and it's still functional and it's better than ever is, is very, very nice. Uh, also, let's talk about multitasking because that's something that has kind of gotten a bit better with, uh, with Windows 10. So let's talk about, uh, well, let, we'll just open up a few apps here. And as you can see, the task uh, switching view now with Windows key, uh, with the Windows key and tab, you can now switch between all your different tasks. It's a little bit like mission control, a little bit like um, a little bit like the comp is exposed features and the task view just looks nice I mean, I've yet to figure out the super efficient keyboard shortcuts to make it work And it is a little bit uh, glitchy in terms of performance a little bit like cinnamon um, But apart from that, it's not bad at all The other really cool thing that I like about it in terms of productivity is quadrant snapping uh, At least that's what they're calling it. Of course, we've had some of these features in KDE for a little while So instead of now just doing uh, side by side windows, you can actually do quadrant snapping now for example, I can put this window over here, up in the top quadrant or the bottom or next to that one. So you have a few more flexible options now when it comes to dragging your videos around and putting them where you want, which is, it's possible. In so many ways, Windows 10 is just an opportunity for the Microsoft operating system to catch up with what a lot of the competition has been offering for a little while now. I mean, performance is fine, compatibility has been next to flawless, uh, and when it comes to some of the first party apps and, and uh, features that they offer out of the box in terms of uh, Groove Music and film and TV apps, the mail apps, OneNote, all of that sort of thing, I was already a, a fairly decent user of a lot of these services. Um, so it, it, can't, it is kind of nice to have a good quality app built into the software. In terms of my upgrade experience and whether you should upgrade, if you're getting offered to upgrade to Windows 10, then yeah, I definitely recommend it. Uh, look, the speed and um, performance improvements, as well as just the overall efficiency of the user interface and you know the start menu and all the different bits and pieces that they've added on there, definitely worth a free upgrade. I mean, you can't really argue with free too much. 
In terms of the overall UI and the first party apps and their overall look and feel, I'm going to dig into those in a little bit more detail, but some of the new features like the Action Center for example, it's like having a mobile phone notification center on your phone with quick toggles, so it's really helpful and there is some useful stuff here. Um, but I guess I'm going to dig into that in more detail in an upcoming uh, video. But in the meantime, look, if you've got the opportunity to get Windows 10, may as well go and grab it. Uh, because, yeah, my first impression is this is definitely some quality stuff that they can build on in the future. So it'll be interesting to see where this goes. So now for the big question of the day. What do you guys think about Windows 10? I think the fact that they've gone ahead and used so much customer feedback to kind of shape how the overall OS feels, I feel like they haven't really put too many feet wrong in that regard. Uh, what the OS looks like now is just what it's going to look like to begin with and as time goes on it's going to kind of grow and evolve and, and I guess change with features and stuff moving forward. So I guess it's kind of looking like a bit of a rolling release. But anyway, let me know what you think about your initial impressions with Windows 10 in the comments below. And uh, of course, if you haven't got your Windows 10 upgrade yet, it'll come soon, I guess. All right, thank you all for watching. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Twitter is probably the better one. And, uh, and I'll see you all in the very next video. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.